We all use our computers every day, but what some people don't do is make the most of them. Today, I want to talk about stuff like apps. Apps are an essential part of how you use your computer. It's what you do in it. You can't browse the web or play a game if you don't have that web browser or game installed on your computer. And I want to show you some really cool apps and stuff to make your computer experience so much better. We'll start with a little app that addresses this little problem. If you don't know, if a Mac is actually charging, it'll have a lightning bolt down here, but it has a clock icon. And the reason for that is an app called Audente. What it does is it stops the computer from charging. I think it's only a Mac app, but it stops the MacBook from charging past 80%. I don't know why it's on 85, it sometimes does not function, but it's the same thing in Teslas. In a Tesla, there is an option to set it to stop after 80%, and that's what you wanna do. It's better for the battery, and it's better for everything, basically. The next one is called NTFS for Mac. NTFS is the file format that most Windows things use. It's what a Windows USB driver would use, a Windows server, or someone like that would use. But MacBooks and Apple Silicon don't know how to handle that because it's an x86 thing that since it's built, since new M1 processors are built on ARM, they don't have. So NTFS for Mac allows MacBooks to tap into it so you can use a server for both your Windows device and your MacBook. It's really useful considering the rest of my family has Windows PCs. I can just use the data off the hard drive my dad has and it's a lot easier. The next app is an app I can actually show. This is Rectangle. Rectangle is an app that I mentioned before and it allows you to snap Mac apps in place. On Windows, this is included and you can do it straight out of the box and it's really useful. But on Mac, it isn't included because Apple likes to be Apple. But you can snap it there. I ha really have it only set up for this and then this if it's a smaller app that I don't want to fill the screen like Spotify. But it works pretty well. This little app called Usage. I only have it set up for this. You can get a lot of stuff. And I, you, I'm using the free version because there isn't much of a difference. But again, it shows I have this one set to determine battery level, which is 85%. It shows you the exact milliamp hours in the battery. 4,988 milliamp hours out of 5923 milliamp hours. Power source AC, if I were to unplug it, switch to battery. Next, and on the right side, we have processor load. It is currently using 14%. Ramps up and down. The only reason it's using so much is because I have 94 apps open. Um, no comment. But it has a lot of options. And then over here, it has a bunch of other stuff. All the pro things you can get, like you can get charge, battery health, that sort of stuff. And speaking of battery health, an app, this is like a bonus app that I just thought of that isn't on my list. It's not battery is really interesting. And what it does is it shows you the exact, it, it, my computer is at 97.6% maximum capacity. It's a pretty good battery on this computer. Anyway, it shows me the exact date the battery is manufactured or what it thinks it is, which is December 26th, conveniently my dog's birthday. And the cycle count 76, battery status. And then if I can connect like my phone up, it'll show me that. That's just a little bonus. The next one that I actually planned is a game, and that would be Asphalt 9. Now, most people know about this game, but it is a very good Mac and Windows racing game. It's pretty good and has really good physics. Oh yeah, I got fourth, I didn't do great. But on the other side of games, we have videos and entertainment. And sometimes you're gonna use this entertainment in a place that isn't your house. Therefore, you kind of want something so you can download YouTube videos without paying for YouTube Premium. But an app that I really like for downloading stuff is ClipGrab. This Mac app, I don't know if it's on Windows, I think it is, uh, allows you to search for any YouTube video, any YouTube video, and now I've downloaded it. Yeah, it already has it. I copied a link from my own video, the previous one that you should watch, um, and it lets you download all these different formats. I don't know why it doesn't have MP3, but MPEG4, I don't know how to say it really works. It only lets you download up to 1080p, which is not the greatest. Oh, that was only like a minute. That was quick. And it should be my desktop. It was supposed to be my desktop. I don't know where it went, but it always does high quality. It's really, it's a really good, honestly, it's a really good thing that I use a lot for getting little moments out of YouTube videos. The next app, latest, is actually one I'm really excited to show you guys. This app lets you, like gives you the updates for different apps that you have and just automatically does. You just click update, just like it's in the app store and coconut batteries updating. So is Geekbench. So is this 
a new looks like a video player. So is iMazing and so is Raiderbox. Now I have the new update of all those apps and it's really useful. But something that I don't find as useful is the next app, it's called Forehead. And what it allows you to do is it allows you to black out this menu bar. There were a few bugs with Forehead and it didn't work, but onto the next app. This is the app that I used to make every single thumbnail on this channel. Thumbnail for this video, removing the previous video. They're all used making this because it's such a good app. It allows you to obviously make presentations. What well, duh. And it's pretty easy. It has a lot of stencils and you can change so much stuff. It's all high quality. It's all really good. That's one of the reasons I really love Kino. It's underrated. And with that comes the end of this video. I really did edit a lot. So I hope if you guys enjoyed, you will subscribe because this really did take a long time. This is by far the longest I've ever spent editing a video. And if you guys did enjoy, again, make sure to smash the like button, subscribe. Peace.